Hey everyone, today I'm giving away this free printable. It is linked in the description down below and we'll go over how this works in just a moment. But I wanted to tell you about estate planning. This video was a request from a viewer who wanted to learn more about what would go into a tracking or planning binder for estate planning. I've included the timestamps here on the screen for your convenience. Business Insider says that estate planning is important for everyone, no matter your age or wealth. Just some examples, if you have any type of bank account or a pet or children or someone who depends on you or any possessions of any value, estate planning may benefit you and your family. The estate planner that I'm showing you today is not just focused on financial planning, but it is going to have other information that surviving family members will need in order to make the process as easy as possible for them. This is information that may not appear in a will or the other legal documents associated with estate planning. I understand that this can be an uncomfortable topic, it can be a scary topic, but I think it's an important one. You don't want your family members to have to struggle through finding information because losing a loved one is hard enough. So why not put together a roadmap or what I'm calling an estate planner for your family now in order to protect them as much as possible. I went online and searched for resources that might help with estate planning, and I decided to purchase something called the Emergency Binder. So this video is kind of like a review of that binder because I used it to create this notebook. Now, of course, it is extremely important that if you do create this, that it's being kept in a very safe location where it cannot be stolen. My plan is to update this once a year and I'll actually be scheduling this into my planner and including a note to schedule in next year's appointment for updating it. I'm going to be doing this in December of each year. And this is going to be something that you're going to want to regularly update because some of the information is probably going to change over time. So I'm actually printing out two of these sheets. This is the free printable that you can access using the link in the description. On each date that I update the estate planner, I will write that date on one of these lines. And the reason why it's important to have a date when the information was last updated is to inform your family about how reliable the information within the planner is. If it's out of date, some of the information may have changed and it's good to make them aware of that. So in this video, I will be doing um, a flip through of this estate planner that I made using this PDF that I found while preparing this video called the Family Emergency Binder by Smart Money Mamas. And this is just an example of what it looks like. Um, part of, this is the military information section, which didn't apply to me, but I wanted to show it to you. And I shrunk it down in size because my original plan was to print out the entire emergency binder and paste it into a notebook. But then I decided that a lot of the information didn't actually apply to me. So I wanted to personalize it both functionally and aesthetically. Functionally so that I could pick and choose the information that I wanted to be included in my estate planner. And aesthetically because knowing myself, I am more motivated when I have something pretty to look at. I'm more likely to update it regularly. And that's kind of why I decorate my planner in the first place. It's to motivate me to actually use my planner. Some examples of things that you could include in an estate planning binder are things like important documents, um, locations of safety deposit keys, information about social media accounts, medical information, pet care information. And some of this information can of course be included in a will, but this is much easier to regularly update when you have access to um, a physical copy. 
that you can update yourself and it can include information that maybe wouldn't be in a will. Although, of course, this notebook is not going to have any legal authority. To create this, I purchased a Happy Notes notebook. However, if you have old planner covers and you have extra insert paper as well as some extra discs, you could create your own. I'm going to be keeping these sheets about when it was last updated at the very front of the estate planner because I want it to be easily accessible and I want to remember to fill it out each time that I update it. So for example, I've retained today's date here because I will be filling this estate planner out once I finish filming this video. I've printed out two sheets because I am planning to be filling this out once a year. And then behind that I have the index. I have three different sections which are behind each of the different tabs. I'm actually going to label those tabs right now. I printed these tabs onto some clear sticker paper. The first tab is financial info, then other info, followed by the call log section. So this just makes it really easy to flip through each of the different sections. I've created a separate index page for each tabbed section. In this case, these page numbers represent the range of numbers that the topic can be found in. It allows you to add on more pages within that range if you need to in the future. So just as an example, I'm just going to call this 0.10. I have color coded this with this light blue dot. Every page between 0.10 and 0.20 falls within the insurance details category. And at the moment behind that at 0.20 is the loan information. But if I want to add more pages that are relevant to my insurance details, I can add them here. I'm just going to finish filling this out right now. Another example, employer info is at 100.200. So this first page of employer info is denoted as 100.200. And the second page is 100.201. which is why you'll see duplicates of some pages and sections in here. After the index, I'm keeping a bunch of blank sheets because I know that I will need to add to this notebook in the future as things change. Let me get to the financial info tab. This first page is for insurance information. For myself, that would be home insurance and auto insurance and I've included information about the accounts and how to log into those accounts, but also listing out those vehicles that are covered by this auto insurance. This will hopefully make it easier if the insurance needs to be changed or if the house or the cars need to be sold to have this information on hand. The next page is information about loans. So here I have my home loan. And this information is supposed to help the executor so that they know information about the debts that need to be paid off. Here are cash accounts. So this would be things like your savings accounts, your checking accounts, and these may need to be closed. So having this information at hand, what the account types and the account numbers are could be really useful. 
the next pages are about utilities internet the electricity the trash the water the gas all of these have separate accounts and they would probably need to be cancelled but it's also important to know things like where the auto payments are coming from so that the person who is put in charge of this would know to have money ready to go in that account if for some reason the utilities are not cancelled. On the next two pages I'm adding credit card information including which bank account each card is being auto paid from if that is relevant as well as account login information for each credit card in case credit card debt needs to be paid off or if credit cards need to be canceled. The next page is for retirement accounts because it can be helpful to have this information to help out the executor to make sure that the designated beneficiaries will receive the funds that are associated with these accounts. On this next page, I have social security information in case there is a situation where that person will receive social security. Never thought that I would be traveling this road. Keeps missing the class. I have a page for subscription, so for example, I have Hulu subscription here because something like this may need to be canceled. And also, it's important to know what account the auto payment is coming from. And then a page for memberships. So for example, if you have a Costco membership, it's important to know the account that the auto payment is coming from and the due dates for those payments. The next page is for physical assets, so things like your vehicle, your house. I have the page numbers that are relevant. So for example, for the house, I have information about the loan, information about all of the utilities, and then on this page, which we'll see later, has information about where the house seat is stored, the building permits, any repairs that were made, inspections, easements, contracts, anything that could be relevant to a house. Under liquid assets, I have the same thing where this is the page where you can find information about the checking accounts and the savings accounts. If there's no page about it in this notebook, then I wrote down location for me to write down the physical location. If you have any existing debt, it would be very helpful for the executor to have a list of those debts in addition to a list of assets. Under the other info tab, the first section is for medical info. So these copies are obviously not real, it's just an example that I've included for you to show you that uh, in the, the case that the person becomes incapacitated, it could be helpful to include a copy of, say, a power of attorney and healthcare instruction form, or to include a copy of a living will just for purposes of quick reference to know um, what that individual's preferences are. Keep in mind though that these copies have no legal power. The next section is for employer info. This is included because the individual may need to notify the supervisor and the HR contact. If the person who has passed has a pension, there would be a beneficiary for that. Also, I've included info about the health insurance provider because that would need to be canceled with maybe the help of the HR contact. Then we have memorial preferences. I've included this because it allows 
you to be as detailed as you want in both your preferences and your wishes, something that you may not have an opportunity to do in the will. And the same applies for stories and letters. This is an opportunity to include something that is very personal. So for example, I have a section for my favorite song, my favorite food, my favorite movie. My proudest moment was when uh, the person who had the greatest influence on my life was and the happiest moment of my life was when. And then I've also included pages for letters. So that you can include anything you want to be remembered by and anything that you can't include in the will. This is a list of the storage locations of documents that may be needed in order to fill out paperwork. So that includes things like the location of the marriage certificate, the passports, birth certificates, the house deed, etc. This will help, hopefully help the individual to save lots of time because they don't have to search for it. They just can flip to this page and identify where it is being stored. I've also included a page for the locations of physical objects, things that are not documents. So on here I have our password book and where we store the extra car keys, but also the physical assets. And I said to see page 0.100 for those locations because they are listed there. The final section is called the call log. I included this sheet, which I'm intending to fill out with the persons to notify. So I would write the name here and then fill out the phone number and address for that individual. This could be useful so that you can identify the people who you wish to be notified and also so that the person who's going to be responsible for this has the contact info ready to go and it makes it easier on them in order to relay information about the funeral. And then beyond that, I have call logs. This was something else that Smart Money Mom has included in her emergency binder. And I just printed those out and I cut them up so that I could paste it onto each sheet. So she had left only this amount of space to write notes, but I felt like you may need more space to write notes. So I decided to designate a full sheet for each call. The reason for call logs is because whether it's a medical emergency or dealing with a state organization, there are often a lot of calls that the person in charge is going to need to make. So it's helpful to be able to keep track of the calls that you're making and also taking notes on each of those calls and to have them all organized in the same location so that they can easily be accessed. You may be wondering, how would you update this regularly? Would you have white out and would it start looking really messy over time? Would you have to cross it out over and over again? So the solution that I've come up with for myself is using pilot friction pens. And I'm going to use different colors for the person that the information is about. For example, I'll probably use this dark blue color for my husband and this light blue color for myself. And the advantage of friction pens is, of course, that they are erasable, but you do not want to store this in a location that gets very hot. So you wouldn't want to keep this estate planner in an attic or a garage, for example, because the ink will disappear. I have heard that putting it in the freezer can help you to, once again, visualize it 
but I feel like with this information, you probably don't want to take a chance. Just as an example, something that I'm going to regularly need to update is the estimated value of the retirement account and the date that that value was updated on. So for example, let's say that in this account, I have $1,000 and that is as of October 17th, 2021. And then maybe I need to update this the following year. So I can just take my friction pen, erase the information, and now write $2,000 as of December 1st, 2022 let's say. And because of this, you don't have to use whiteout, you don't have to cross things out, and it makes it look a lot less messy. The pros of purchasing the binder were that it saved me time from trying to think about what info I needed to include, and also that it comes in editable and non-editable formats. You can print out as many versions as you'd like. And there are also separate versions for individuals who have children versus those who do not. I do not have children, so I use the version without children. However, in my opinion, it was kind of on the expensive side. And since there were a lot of sections I didn't need, I kind of felt like I was wasting them. There were sections that I would have liked to have that were missing. Also, each page has this section at the very bottom that says last update. But what do you do if you only want to update one line on the page? Would you have to print this out again every single time? And I don't really want to have to fill out entire pages every time I need to change something. It wasn't really as aesthetically pleasing as I'd like it to be, so that's one of the reasons why I decided to make my own. But if you don't have time or you want to save time, then I do recommend printing out the PDF and maybe adding it to a binder or you can shrink it down in size like I did here and you can add it to um, a Happy Notes notebook. Either cutting out the pages and punching holes in the side or pasting them onto pre-punched pieces of paper. I found some additional resources for you and I'll link them down below. Investopedia provides an estate planning checklist and they talk about things like itemizing your inventory, assembling a list of debts, etc. And there is also a link to information about writing a letter of instruction, which contains more ideas of what can go into your estate planner. If you know of any resources that could help maybe a book you read, a website you went to, or anything else, please let us know in the comments because the purpose of this channel is that we're coming together to help others out so it would be very much appreciated if you did that and i'll see you next saturday bye Take a walk together.